Hello and welcome everybody to Crypto Zeta. My name is Savage and today we're going to be looking at Ethereum. We're going to discuss what we think this strong pump to the upside here is and whether we still have that potential to come down lower into the support zone like we've been talking about or whether we could actually be looking to push to the upside from this current position. So we're going to discuss both the bearish and the bullish potential within this video. So make sure you stay tuned so that you get both of those. Got uh, CPI coming out today. So it's going to be an interesting day. You know, potentially some volatility inbound, so make sure that you are prepared for that. Okay, so let's get into basically what we were talking about yesterday. So I want to just start off by talking about a few of the potentials that have been validated. So we have actually come and taken this high point here. So we were talking about the possibility of looking at this as a one, two, one, two, but we've actually come too high now, and basically that is invalidated. So we were talking, I'm going to just go through so we can clear out some of those for people who have been following. We're talking about a potential of a diagonal down, um, looking for continuation here, but we came up too high and we had our, our zone here, this 50% saying that once it went above that, it was potentially less likely. So we're going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of that. This is still viable, the one, two, one, two, which is what we're talking about as a one, two, one, two. That's no longer viable, so we're going to get rid of that. And uh, yeah, so we were also talking about this potential of breaking to the upside yesterday. Um, we're going to go over a couple of these cards. So much like with Bitcoin, you know, there is that potential that we could come and actually look to uh, fill this gap. So if I come in here onto the um, futures, we can see that we do have a gap here between this zone of this 1528 and this 1435. So I am being mindful, you know, we could actually see a move back down into this area to retest. This doesn't happen, have to happen right away. You know, this could happen um, after some time, but Potentially this gap at some point will be filled. It is possible, like I said, you know, if we're looking at this as a move to the upside, we could look at this as either an A or one, potentially we come back for a B wave or two, and then we look to progress from there. So we're going to discuss um, a few of these potentials. So let's get back into our main count here. So one of the things we were talking about yesterday is that potential that, you know, this could have been a completed ABC move to the downside and uh, effectively we were looking at that possibility of coming up for a B wave higher up here. So we have actually come up to that 0 0.854. So the way in which we've done so, you know, potentially it does look like an impulse. So we need to see if this proves itself and we get an additional fourth and a fifth wave here. That's the way that I'm looking at it currently, that it still needs a another wave to the upside here to complete. We need to be cautious, however, because we are in this previous B wave location. We're at resistance on the bottom of this channel we are consolidating below it which is a good sign potentially it could mean we break back into it um, but you know we also need to just be aware that we have we are sitting on fib resistance here we've um we've tested the swing high here of this b wave and you know potentially we could still look for that continuation to the downside so that would be looking potentially towards that 1333 at a one to one and then potentially deeper if um if it looks to push down there so the way i'm currently looking at this is we're talking about that possibility that you know because of the way we have this structure within here you know there is that potential that within here we have a triangle as an a b c d e so if that's the case you know this can't be a one and a two here anymore um and effectively it could actually look to throw out this whole move um, in, in the sense that it wouldn't be able to be counted as an impulse from the from the low point here. And basically what I'd be looking at is within this structure, you know, potentially we've actually come up, okay, we haven't come up to that 2.618, but I'll be keeping an eye on this 2.618 if we do actually push up one more time here. Potentially that could either be a fifth wave or, you know, or we could actually look at this um, starting to break down from there. But for the most part, it's actually, if we're looking at it as a corrective structure here, as an A, B, one, two, three, four, and a five, potentially this is actually completed already into this high. In which case, you know, we, we could actually be looking for that potential to actually break down deeper here looking for a three wave move, which could actually come back towards this 1502 to this 1422, which would actually tie in with actually going and filling that gap that we talked about. So, you know, potentially this is something that's on the cards. We want to look at this as a corrective structure up here. 
Um, alternatively, there is a way of counting this as an impulse, and we're going to go over that in a second. If we do get this as just a three wave move and we fail to develop an additional fourth and a fifth here, you know, potentially what we could then be looking at is this is a three wave move up, which could either be this B wave high here, or alternatively, this could be the A wave of this B wave, and this B wave actually extends out a bit. So, you know, we need to allow for the fact that this could actually extend out. So, what it'll be looking out for here is potentially coming back and looking to retest this zone of this 1502 to this 1424. If we do get another wave up here, then potentially, you know, we could look at that impulse being more probable. But if we just actually start to break down here, potentially this could be this B wave, which could then lead us to a C wave up towards the 1703 area. So the, the interesting thing about this is, you know, if we are looking at this B wave potentially extending, I have also put this zone up here, this 1911 to the 1742. And this would be looking at that possibility that, um, you know, within here, we could actually get a flat as an A, get a B, and then C to the downside. So if we are looking at a flat correction here, this would be the typical zone for um, for a expanding or a running flat, where we actually come up here towards this 382, which would be this 1911 area, or lower down towards this 1845. So it depends how we how we actually move up there. If we move up there in a three wave move, something like this, then potentially we could be setting up to have a five wave decline for the C wave, which could actually look to bring us down deeper um, than the current zone that I have marked out here. Obviously, once we get this B wave come in, we can get a better idea of this. So yeah, within this option, we need to maintain this 1424. Losing that would make it less probable that we are actually looking for this continuation to the upside here, looking for this potential corrective structure still in this bigger move as an A, a B, and a C, looking to come down one more time. So. That is basically the way of looking at it as a corrective move. The The reason that uh, I am looking at this is, you know, in time relationship, we haven't had a very big move down here for a B wave. It's been very quick in comparison to this whole A wave that we have um, over here. You know, this whole move, this B wave is quite short. These things do happen, but sometimes, you know, we need to just be allowed for the fact, you know, this could extend, even if it becomes an A, a B, and a C, like I said, you know, then we look to actually potentially retest this channel, push up, test this channel again, and then look for that continuation to the downside and get rejected. So, you know, this is something that can play out. We'll have to keep an eye on it. We'll keep you informed as we see the structure develop. The other way I was looking at it was potentially that we are completed into this low. So, if we are looking at it like this, you know, effectively what we can argue is within here we have a diagonal with a two, one, two, three, four, five. Now, there's a couple of ways that this could be playing out if we are looking for a fourth wave. So I have got this labeled up as a potential triangle within here, where, you know, if we stay above this 1646 and below the 1706, if we see three wave structure develop here, we could see a D wave play out and then an E wave and then look to break directly to the upside here. So potentially that target zone could be in this 1768 to this 1721 if we don't get any extension within the waves here and it doesn't extend out further. But this would be a typical area we'd be looking for potentially as a, um, as a fourth wave uh, and a fifth wave to the upside. However, if we do come down deeper, you know, potentially we could actually come back and retest this area of this fourth wave. So if this triangle fails, what we could have here is basically this is an this is an A, a B, and then we actually look to push down for a C wave. So the typical area as a flat um, for this would be the 1637 to the 1620 region. That would be the typical area we'd be looking at. But the, the way that the structure is developing here, you know, it, it could potentially look to push down deeper if it is going to develop into a flat. We don't have good structure here um, in this wave as a five wave move. It could always turn into some kind of a diagonal here where we get something like that, where this is a 
this is basically a 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 move, and then we get some kind of a contracting diagonal to the downside here, potentially looking to push into these zones, but we don't have that structure yet. Alternatively, we could get something like this as a 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, and then we actually look to push down lower here towards this previous fourth wave area. So within this, you know, th this was going to be the key zone looking for this fourth, this 1545. Any kind of a move below that would invalidate, um, or it would make it less probable anyway. It only really gets invalidated by moving much lower here towards this 1476 area. And basically then we would be looking for um, the possibility that either this move is completed in just a three-wave move, or alternatively, you know, this could be an A. Yeah, this could then be an A, a B or one, two, one, two, and then we look to break to the upside. So it's gonna be important to see how we react. If we lose this 50% though, um, you know, potentially we could be looking for a one, two, one, two, but um, we'd have to be very careful then because that could also just signal that, you know, this whole move up is corrective. And then we're gonna get that continuation down for that C wave. If however, we do form an additional fifth wave to the upside here, what I would then be looking for would be the potential to actually come back down here towards this 1542 to this 1440. Holding this zone, we could then look for that potential of a continuation to the upside, where this becomes either an A, a B, and a C to the upside, or alternatively, you know, this could uh, look to actually push up higher and become a five wave structure, which uh, would be looking to potentially target out. Let me just change this. So a one to one would actually take us up here to this 1933, and that could potentially be an A, a B, and a C wave to the upside. Or alternatively, you know, if we do push up much higher towards this 2262 range, then we could have a bigger five wave move here, where this becomes a one, a two, we get a push up for a third wave, we get a fourth wave, and then a fifth wave to the upside, something like this. Um, obviously, we don't have the structure to confirm this yet, but for as long as we hold this low here at the 1368 and we hold this 1440 area, potentially we can still look for this um, option to play out to the upside. But like I said, you know, we need to be a little bit cautious here. This could actually just fail this fourth wave, and then we could actually just look to set a new low here, um, looking for moving below this 1368 and then potentially coming back down deeper for this uh, B wave. So, you know, even if we do find form a five wave move here, technically speaking, it doesn't mean that we're out of a correction. This could be a A, we come back down here for a B and then we get us move up to that uh, one to one for a C wave. And then we look to break down, like I said, looking for that possibility of an A, a B, and then potentially a C wave for that as a flat. You know, there, there is a lot of um, options at the moment. They, they, uh, we need to sort of see how we react and hold these levels. If we, For as long as we hold above 1368, potentially we could be starting a new leg to the upside in the C wave, which could potentially look to push up um, higher than I have it marked there because that is off of that 618 area, but potentially somewhere around this. It's not much lower, actually. This 2241 range would be a one-to-one -one of that first move if we do actually start to push to the upside here. And then that could actually just be a three-wave structure. Alternatively, it could start to develop in a bigger move here to the upside, and we could be trending. We don't have that confirmation yet, though. So. That is basically what we're looking at within these moves. You know, we're cur currently sitting right on this bottom of this channel. Uh, we do have support of this other channel, potentially, if we do come back down. We've got this FIB support, which we're going to have to be keeping an eye on for as long as we remain within this um, within this uh, triangle. You know, potentially, this could be viable. We need to see this D wave confirm. Um, the 0 0.618 of that D wave is actually up here. Uh, sorry, of this B wave. Is actually up here at the 1684 so if we see a three wave move up into this zone you know potentially that could then mark our d wave and we could see something it, it doesn't it might be a bit more sharp like this um where this becomes a d we get an e and then we push up one more time for that c wave um so that's what we're looking out for you know sorry for this fifth wave here and then basically this would be a fourth 
we'd look for this fifth wave here. And then from that point, you know, we'd be looking to see if we retrace back down into this 1542 range to this 1440 area. Um, one thing I do want to just talk about briefly, uh, there's a couple of things I want to just touch on. You know, th there is still that possibility that within this this move, we, we're looking at that possibility to break down. Like I said, you know, we, we do see these moves happen sometimes where we get these strong impulse looking waves to the upside and then actually it just breaks down and it's been a B wave. So we just need to see if it actually comes back, retests that key zone of support and then looks to move away or whether we actually just uh, start to break down deeper here, lose this low point, and then actually we'd be looking for that deeper move into this support zone here between this 1368 and this 11, uh, 1192. Uh, we were talking about a potential of a diagonal here. Uh, it's not my favorite interpretation of it, but you know, for the most part, you could argue that this is viable, where this becomes a one, two, three, four, and a five as an expanding diagonal. Um, it would be invalidated if we're looking for that possibility of continuation to the downside, either as a A, B, and a C, or a um, a one, a two, and a deep a third wave. Third wave would only get confirmed by moving lower down towards this 1145 area. So that's why it's important that we hold this 786 at this 1192. Otherwise, you know, it starts to get really close to pushing onto this 1618 area, which could then actually indicate that, uh, you know, we're in a trending move to the downside, where this becomes a one, two, bigger third wave to the downside, fourth and a fifth. Uh, so, yeah, we need to be a little bit cautious about this. Um, we don't have enough confirmed yet. What I'd like to see ideally is this move come back, finish that fifth wave to the upside, even if it does drop down a little bit lower here and then go up, then look for that support above this low and then look for that potential to break to the upside. So that that is uh, just something I wanted to say with regarding this. The, there is another way of looking at this and I've been sort of playing around with it recently. And, um, you know, potentially we could read this whole move differently as well. And it, it just basically depends on how we look at the substructure. If we look at this wave one rather finishing into this, this high as a diagonal pattern with a flat here, potentially we could change how we look at this move where this is a one, two, three up into here, flat for a four and a fifth wave into here which would then potentially make this a fourth wave. So this is um, viable. We did come down a little bit deep, but we didn't cross this zone of this wave one here. Um, so, you know, potentially we could actually see this play out where we're actually still within the fifth wave. And I've got some target zones on here. So I'm just keeping an eye on both of these. Um, the other one is still my preferred count, but I'm just seeing how this reacts because, uh, you know, if this starts to follow better, potentially this could be what's going on. So the, the thing is, we've actually, we've come up to this one-to-one. -one. So this yellow line here is this one-to-one -one of the wave one. Um, so we've actually met that one-to-one -one already. Some other key zones that we've met is this 0 0.382 of the wave one to three. And then um, basically up here, we've got this little zone, this little cluster. I'm actually going to remove this line here for a second. So if we do actually continue to move up here and we do look to push um, even higher, you know, potentially this 0 0.618 area, this 1844 could be an interesting one that ties in with this 0, or this 1 1.3, uh, 1.236 area. If we're looking at this reverse fib off of here, you know, potentially this could actually be a, an interesting zone as well as that we have that 1.618 of the wave one, which is sitting in this zone as well. So like I said, I'm, I'm still... Uh, the other one is still my preferred count, but I'm just keeping an eye on this. If we do start to move up into this zone, you know, and we complete here in this five wave move, and then we get something like a bigger zigzag to the downside, which then still finds support lower down here and then looks to move away. Potentially, you know, that could be what's playing out. They're, they're, unfortunately, at the moment, there is a lot of possibilities. Um, you know, this whole move up here, you know, you could even, you could even break it down slightly different and say that potentially maybe you have a one, two here and then a one, two here. 
and then basically you could be looking at a one, two, one, two, and then next thing you start a bigger third wave to the upside. So, you know, the, the, at the moment, there's a few things that we can see here. There is potential, but it needs to prove itself. And if we start to take some of these lows, you know, it, it basically, um, it makes it less likely that we're going to see anything continue here. Really, if we if we start to lose a 786 zone, like I said, you know, potentially we have to be very careful um, as this move could start to break to the downside. There is, you know, so many possibilities. This whole move could actually still be um, a triangle in development where we get something like this play out. You know, we need to see how these levels hold it and, and what the, the market is actually telling us. Okay, so everyone, I'm going to leave the video there. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please smash that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Turn on those bell notifications so you never miss a video. Leave us some feedback down below. And uh, yeah, in the description, you'll also find a link to the Discord. Come check it out. It is free to join. As well as that, there is affiliate links for Primex BT and Bybit, both great exchanges that we use on a regular basis. Check them out for yourselves if you don't have an account. Using the affiliate link does help support the channel, and we do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.